السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ حضرت اسک ائی ڈو سائب اف یو انڈرسٹینڈس ہی از سینگ دس امیزنگ ہی از سینگ دیٹ ہی از اے اسٹوڈنٹ اف مائی اردو کلاس اینڈ ہی از دی موسٹ پاپولر اسٹوڈنٹ اف اردو کلاس ہی از کالڈ ہی از کالڈ بگ بگ چائلڈ ہو سوڈ نیمڈ ہم ہو سوڈ اسکنگ ہم وسا نمران سیر از ویل Is there a saying that uh, because of because I asked, he has come to come to the front, so it's been beneficial for him that I asked. Is there a saying that uh, these days there was a a church program of a church, and another company has t- uh, took more time uh, on the sa- satellite, and then when we protested, we realized that it wasn't the fault of the video set. There was another company um, took some they took the time. Today they're saying that. Um, we are starting at the right time. You are saying that we are speaking of the same verse. We should start begin from the same verse again. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa in khiftum wa la tuqtetu fil yatama fan kehu ma taabalakum min misai matna wa sulata wa ruba. فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا فَوَاحِدَةً أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ ذَلِكَ أَدْنَى أَلَّا تَعُولُوا اس کا ترجمہ پہلے ہو چکا ہے حضور سنگھ اب ڈن دی ٹرانسلیشن پریویسلی اینڈ ان دس ریگارڈ I had also said that there is a tradition of Bukhari and at the end of which it says that in the according according to that there is no fifth and sixth words in uh, in, the, in Arabia but he was saying I've got a, um, a, um, a reference from Palestine and it seems to be the opposite of this but that's that's not doesn't contradict with this. They say that, that in uh, the we have said that they, there is no fifth and sixth in Arabic and such things are found in Arabic and they are referred to as faal and faul mafala. So they sound like mafala just as ohad, mohada, sana, wa masna. Samnasa Muslifa Ruba wa Marba and keeps on going Khumasa wa Makhmasa Sudasa wa Mastasa So he thinks that in Arabs this is uh, this is known these words are present but they are rare but the example that he has given is um, Re- he repres- represents this and the different style in the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran says, Masna wa Salasa wa Raba, what each one has been used once. And they say, he says that, Jal Qomu, Ohada wa Mohada. Jal Qomu, Ohada wa Mohada. It's a completely different uh, style. Arabs use it together, Ohada wa Mohada. that someone came alone that, that is the people came alone and they went uh, in the groups of five who are saying that all the examples that we have given they are of two words together and the style of the Holy Quran is different so they don't get involved in this uh, confusion And um, let us now turn towards the, the usual dars. The, the Prophet Sayyid Islam, his um, understandings from this commentary and what he wrote about this verse at different occasions, some of them were saying that I selected. One was the one which um, respond to the allegations made about this uh, verse, especially those made by the Christians. And the other is um, the general allegations which the uh, new um, 
modern thinking people they have they have uh, alleged and also the allegations made with the Aryas have been responded to by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who are saying that after telling you this now I want to return you to the Orientalists and in their language with who are um, uh, and uh, the people who, who were first in in comparison to them they are clearly they follow the truth the saying I should put the references in front of you and the Prophet Islam says that in this place the um, people allege that in the that polygamy is is a, is a cruelty who is asking about a word is, that is not as the wise is as wise that they say, they say that they, they, because it isn't uh, because people can't maintain justice because, and because justice demands that one man should have one uh, wife and people often say that this is more just that for one man there should be one woman one wife he's saying that i don't understand why they interfere in other people's circumstances when this is a very clear in, in islam that it is okay to marry up to f up to four wives that no one's compelled to do so so this is a um, this is a permission and it's not a command that everyone must do this and every man and woman knows about this and it is the right of those women that if they do a nikah with a Muslim then the first they should have a condition that the the woman the husband, husband will never marry another woman and if if she does this then um, then it's okay so if she wants to keep this uh, right that because I cannot bear the thought of you having another wife so in the from the very beginning make this my right and make it a written right the Prophet Islam says that, that is fine you can do that that can be done Zuri is saying that from this I am uh, I am worried that that we may, may not have to add another thing to um, the nikah form that they sh there might be a, a condition attached in it and so he says that every and and if before the nikah such a condition is written down then such a woman's husband if she marries again then he will be um, he will be a crime of um, of <coughs> of um, breaking of the covenant will be committed by him so but he will not be he will not have a um, crime against him or about uh, against Islam but if she if a woman does not write this condition and um, she then another person interfering will be wrong and then this then this we will have to accept that if if the husband and wife are happy then what does it have to do with anyone else and the Quran has not made this a con instruction that everybody must marry for it is only a permission so if someone w wants to make use of this then this is from the from the normal routine um, it's a normal routine um, action um, so we're saying that the woman can then also from Islam says that if the woman can't bear it then she can take a divorce and this she has a right to do that and she can be free of this pain and the other woman who uh, is uh, does not wish to um, have this nikah then she can deny such a person they they're not compelled but if both women are happy with this nikah then no Arya has has uh, any uh, any right to interfere um, with in this as a man going to marry the women or the Arya. The 
As far as Allah has kept this to be permitted, then a woman um, is happy about about the nikah. Then it's no one's right to uh, to um, spoil this and to interfere in this, and then to say that the more than one wife is beca is because of. Um, uh, because people are, have sensuous, sensual desires which they want to fulfill. This is completely ignorant. He's saying that we have seen with our eyes that those people on whom um, such sensuality is uh, is uh, is uh, who are overwhelmed by that, then if they do, um, if they do um, make, if they do marry a second wife, then this makes them. Um, they, this makes them uh, okay. Otherwise, their desires can take them to the uh, women uh, in the streets, or they get involved in some other terrible disease, and and um, they are not. This, the example of this is not found in those people who actually have wives, who they like. Huzur is saying that this matter at the end about this, the worst, um, this one that spoken the worst is is very and and the permission of um, the um, the uh, the polygamy has been made in, into a um, an attack on Islam, which is completely wrong. And just as I have explained, he doesn't realize that his body doesn't realize that marrying more than once is is not an excuse to to satiate somebody's desires. Um, every society in this world, in these uh, countries, they are following in such step footsteps, and no one should cares that they should marry one or two, they don't need to, and they should uh, be should fulfill their, pick up their um, burdens. So this is as if you take, a, could take on a lot of problems for yourself. The fact of the matter is that marrying more than once is not something which is, um, which is something which would uh, normally happen, where the, um, where the uh, responsibilities have to be um, have to be lift, have to be taken up. If anyone uh, thinks that they are going to take up the burden of um, Islamic Sharia, then he he doesn't uh, marry just for to satiate his desires. In, indeed, most of the times, those people who have married more than once, even if they are uh, even if they are really good, they still stop themselves because if, if they are exemplary we um, weddings. And yet, in itself, this is a this is akin to taking on the huge responsibility. As the Muslim was done, who had four wives at a time, and then when one wife would die, then he would marry another one, and then when another one died, then he would marry another one. So in um, for seven in uh, seven sorry, um, he said that uh, who said that. Um, he had four wives at a time, the, the Muslim al and um, there, there are, are, he had 13 sons and not a single one married, uh, had a second wife. So if he, they had seen that they had, there was um, a lot of uh, uh, enjoyment in the house and they would also have married, he was saying that it was a very blessed um, circum uh, situation and if, if from from many aspects, this was a very exemplary marriage. Marriages, they had no, uh, st uh, they did not feel step step uh, brothers and stepsisters. They felt like real brothers and sisters, and they loved each other a lot. And sometimes, the they used to, um, they were more closely related to um, to other uh, other uh, sons um, more than their own sisters. And Huzur is saying that, for example, I had a friend, I'm, uh, my friend was Abdul Umar Sahib, I think Huzur said, who was um, my friend and he, his, his own sister, uh, his own brothers were uh, less uh, closer to him than I was. So. It was an exemplary situation, and in spite of that, 
it is he saw you saw in your we saw in our hearts it was very difficult for the Muslim Azana to fulfill the responsibility and it was not easy to marry more than one so and the Prophet is when the Prophet says that this has had nothing to do with any um, uh, any desires such people, why should they w want to marry more than one? Uh, there's a principal of government college who was saying, or perhaps he was some other um, gentleman he did not marry. And, and someone, to, uh, such a person told me, who actually asked him a question, that uh, you are, uh, it's been so long and you are so mature and you are well-to-do and you are educated. He was saying that I don't remember whether he was a professor of government college or whether he was um, had some other big um, post. But because I have a, he uh, was saying that he was a a gentleman who. Um, a, an Ahmadi brother asked an Englishman, and I said to him, "Why don't you get married?" And he said. He said that you are saying the opposite. You should you should say that why do you marry? And he said that the one who can have fresh milk every day, what what is the point for him to have a cow in the house? Those saying that those people whose society is uh, gives freedom to for to uh, luxuries, uh, there one more than one um, marriages they don't they don't like because uh, why they they do not wish to take another a woman um one uh, fulfill the responsibilities of another wife in fact it's the other way around if people are not permitted to ma marry a, se a second wife that is where um diseases um, um are spread that is of the spiritual diseases so they saying that now we shall talk about the allegations raised by the Aryas, and then we shall return to worry. The Prophet Islam says that uh, in the hands of the Aryas these days against the Muslims, they try to create misunderstandings, and this is the reason for this. That this is this is why they. Um, this is the only issue that remains at which these uh, people, they, because of um, its wisdom, they sorry, they keep on attacking it because the present time has, is screaming out and saying that the it, more than one wife is is important, is essential, and Aryans thought it was uh, important as well, and. And as to how we fulfilled that need, and what was what was the uh, way method of the Aryas um, uh, fulfilling this need, then that uh, um, the polygamy is niyog. Huzur said, Huzur is saying that now compare these two and see which one is better. So the um, polygamy. They are uh, they are niyog and there's and they are it's uh, polygamy and this word because as we are saying that some needs that man has naturally he gives a, give a solution to that and and this at this they said that if Islam has given uh, the permission to marry more than one then the need was definitely there and. They must have, should have been, ought to have been a solution to that problem. And what is, was the solution? The solution is that um, Aryas used to, um, in the past, they used to marry more than one. And the other uh, problem issue is that of the Og, which they gave as a solution to this problem. They've adopted it um, as, as a religious belief. And the detail of this, um, the Prophet Islam says, or from another uh, uh, tradition, so another reference. Some are saying some of the things I shall leave in the middle because otherwise it will become really long, and it will be. It will, I'll only read a little bit of it, uh, even though Arya Samaj 
uh, look at the polygamy with, the, with, the, with, the, with hatred, but no doubt they accept the need for which often men uh, are forced to be polygamous, and which is that it's man who is the best of creation. For him, it's, it's essential to um, to do to adopt a good way of letting their um, to let their generation spread and to save himself from being without issue. And this is that. Um, this is that method of um, uh, of um, extending your family, which the Holy Quran has told us. The Holy Quran has presented, and in 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 contradiction to this, the what Ved has presented, which he regards as being um, uh, being essential, is niyog, which means that if someone's uh, in someone's house, from there's no. Uh, um, wife, sorry, the wife doesn't have any children. The first wife, there are two ways of getting children. One is that that woman should uh, go and um, the Prophet has used these words <coughs> that a woman should go and um, have, a, have a relationship with another husband, another man, and she he can do this. She can do this for 14 up to 14 years. She should keep a relationship with another man, and uh, the children that are born out of that man, they will be uh, like uh, a ch um, chickens. They can be sp spring uh, uh, divided in half, ha so and ha give half to the one who is uh, is a lawful husband and half to the unlawful husband. And look at the incredible justice that after 14 years, all the children should be ha halved. And if there is an extra one child, then what? Is what he's saying? Is what he's saying that will be the, incident, the Suleiman al-Islam's um, incident will apply. There was a there was a um, a, a trial in the Suleiman um, al-Islam's um, um, uh, court where the two, two women were uh, fighting over one child and they both wanted it for themselves and Suleiman al-Islam saw that they were both uh, uh, said that it's my child and there seemed to be no reason as to uh, call one the liar and the other the truth for one. So at this uh, Suleiman al uh, because he was sitting on the throne of justice, he said this is the, this is the only solution is that let us cut the child in half let us give half to one and half to the other. At uh, this, the real mother, she s said, "No, no, no, my, my, uh, I don't care. Give my child to her, uh, to her, her, because she didn't want the, her ch child to be cut." So, so the Prophet Islam is telling, is saying, that this is their, um, the, their call of their nature, that is the Aryans, and they say that let us distribute the children in half but the promise the who saying what i'm saying that what if there's an extra child an odd number then who will get that that one perhaps perhaps the real father will say that give it to give it to this other uh, uh, lawful husband who has accepted the uh, debauchery because because she, he, he he will be the one who would be who would want to take care of him, him to him to be taken care of better. Uh, so saying, uh, the Prophet says that will the will the husband get um, half or or um, will the other has father get uh, the children who who was a friend who was a boyfriend? The Prophet then says that. That all those Aryas who who were um, Aryans, but their but they were their nature was good and pure, so that people don't have the impression that all the Aryas of India commit this kind of crimes. He says, from Salasam says that I know that even now many hundreds of thousands of um, Hindus are such who who cannot accept this teaching of the Vedas and like the Muslims they they probably marry other women that is that they they will not um, they be happy to <coughs> sorry so this shows that 
the, even the nature of the Hindus regard there to be uh, more than one wife and if you look in, in the Punjab you will see that there are many hundreds of um, Hindus who have got more than one wife but in spite of this small group of Aryas no other Hindu will not accept that his wife should go and um, have um, um, have a relationship with another man in order to have children and again the Christians are mentioned <clears throat> and the Christians when Christian the Christians who make um, the Jesus into God despite doing that uh, look at how they treat him apart from other things another a new thing I have found which is that the history tell says that the person with whom Mary married she had a wife uh, before before that so since the first time I've heard it as well perhaps you might have heard it for the first time as well that perhaps very few, pe few people knew, knew that, the, that Joseph was already married and which is that the history tells us that the Joseph which married mother Mary he, he, she had he had a first wife as well so um, the one should one should reflect on this that the Hindus the Christians have said that uh, sorry the, the Jews said that the, um, he was born Jesus was born um, illegitimately and they say that uh, he he uh, sh he made her sorry he was explaining it that according to their history Mary when she when returned from that uh, place in the east where she went during her uh, pregnancy and that's where she gave birth then when she found out that um, she was pregnant then at that time she married Hazrat Yusuf in order to remove the, uh, the sorry in, so during pregnancy when he was found out that the pregnancy has occurred then it wasn't she was married just to cover up his his weakness and that they committed two crimes first is that they made a pregnant woman marry someone else and the second is that it was the custom that the temple the Jewish that they should be devoted to the Jewish temple and if anyone is, is done is uh, um, that happens then it's it's um, sorry I was really saying that whether it's a custom or not I don't know but it's I think it's the first time I, I, as far as I know it's the first time that a woman was made a devotee a life devotee in a Jewish temple that is Mary so afterwards because of Mary's uh, um, because of Mary this happened in the uh, Christian era because, sorry in the, in the Christian era in the Christian things as well society as well so once this was done she offered herself with she said that she would not marry or that I will not have any relationship with any man and when the child was born then they she should have married afterwards so the prophet Islam says that that um, the history is telling us that it was two people who's the Jews of the time ignored and they tried to cover up some of the things one was the uh, hypocrites they, they, so hypocr hypocr sorry the um, promise that they had before the church they broke that promise and then they did not lift up any of, uh, uh, lift, did anything to to do that and then they then he says that in this way they um, disrespected the sharia of uh, the torah and um, then and despite this uh, the Jesus um, birth is been, people have been um, 
So on the one hand, the elders were doing this, performing this task, and on the other hand, they disrespected Jesus and they, they criticized him so terribly that we who love Jesus the most, we, we will not, we, we will not like to hear any of those words. In comparison to them, what do the Christians do? The Christians indeed regarded the birth of Jesus as the birth of uh, the Holy Spirit and and they made God born, be, become born out of um, Mary and but then because they said the polygamy was wrong they have the same the allegation against the children of um, Mary so by saying that polygamy was wrong they, they attacked Mary Mary's children in the sense that how was it was this done so saying, do you understand in this they did it in this way that before that Yusuf had a wife and if someone has one wife the Christians say and then he marries another woman then the other uh, children will be um, an, uh, illegitimate children and they have said this and they have insulted the Holy Prophet and his companions. The Prophet Islam has explained this in a very exquisite fashion that the Jews have attacked, um, oh, had attacked one son of um, Mary that he was illegitimate and but they have uh, attacked all of the uh, children of Mary when they declared that one a man has to be monogamous and the Yusuf who had uh, children before him before him sorry who had um, uh, who, he had children before and so he had a wife before um, he married Mary and as a result of the, that, Jesus' birth and the birth of his brothers became, um, uh, he, they attacked on that, so they have put, they have, uh, they have um, axed their own feet. We regard Jesus as being extremely respect, respectful and we believe that he was a holy man and we believe that he was born um, without a father and was a great um, incredible greatness of Allah's um, uh, glory that if people think if people think that it happened as a, as a re reason um, for um, as a result of some temporary marriage or something who's are saying this is completely wrong the uh, promise Islam says that this was a special instruction of special glory of Allah and it but it was according to the law of um, um, the law of nature which was used exceptionally for his for his sake but we, this is not the discussion that we want to do now but the Prophet said that he was the, uh, a sign of the glory of Allah and Hazrat Maryam was Siddiqa, she was a truthful lady and this is a favor of the Holy Quran on, on Mary and on Jesus that he the, he he de, the declares a purification and is there um, a favor of the Imam of this time that he had um, uh, renewed this uh, purification in this day and age. So those people who insult the um, Prophet Islam that he um, he um, um, insulted Jesus, they are completely wrong, and they and the Prophet Islam says that. People started to uh, ask the question as to how Jesus' um, birth took place. In, uh, he may have been born like an ordinary human being, and, and in order to cover it up, she was um, made excuses. But this was the, the truth: was this that she accepts the. Um, the allegation and it wasn't an immaculate um, uh, birth so is saying that and because of us it is we are spreading this across the world that Messiah was pure and so was his mother so in this country as well people who give to the propaganda that um, the, that, uh, that the Prophet Islam insulted Jesus they are completely wrong 
And I will say the reason why I have to clarify this is because recently the new uh, place that we were um, buying, the new center, Malvis got together and they told the people of that area, they tried to make them hate us and the main thing that they said to them was they were it was inst they were instigated and they even um, got together with National Front who were, who have always been against them and both of them got together and they did this program that between people's houses that the Jamaat Ahmadiyya whom you are about to give uh, place, a place to their uh, founder has used extremely horrific language against Jesus so how could you bear it and, and then um, uh, different references were presented um, uh, by twisting them and, uh, and so on and then there was a, a very um, a very um, a very uh, fiery debate that took place in the church and the church goes hardly went there but Riff Raff got, got collected and Malvis went there as well and these are the people who um, loud, uh, speak um, loudly against the Jamaat and their um, they, they keep they, uh, until their voices are hoarse and they say that we are um, that uh, the Jamaat has been is a plant of the English, and now they're telling the English that um, uh, that we are against them. So they're saying that the lies has got no legs, no legs to stand on. And they're saying that the whole promised Islam has said to the Christians that you should create unity among yourself. You have contradictions within yourselves. On the one hand you are attacking the Holy Prophet at the issue of, um, of polygamy and you don't you are not afraid of uh, insulting them and the one that whom you call the son of God uh, whose um, his, his grandchildren his three grandmothers according to you were um, uh, were um, 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 uh, ladies of uh, questionable character and this is he gave the references and then but then to say that the promise Islam says this because David had more than one wife and Solomon had more than one wife etc and Jesus is from him so uh, he therefore he he was a illegitimate uh, child that the Prophet Islam may have said anything else is completely wrong and it's a deceitful act. The Prophet Islam says that they were legitimate uh, ladies, legitimate wives and the ones against whom you raise these um, allegations they are false. He does not accept them. He, is, he um, he um, acquits Solomon and David and all those elderly people who are mentioned in the Bible as having more than one wife, but he writes to the writers of the Bible that you have, um, this is not God's word, it is your own um, base desires which you have inserted in the Bible and then by accepting it as God's word, then, then look at what the result is if it's in reality, um, God's word and man has not in, um, interfered in it, then your um, son, your, uh, according to you, the son of God, this is what he becomes. And then he says that he declared his purity according to the Holy Quran. The Prophet said that he is the Yesu, or the, the, Jew, the Jesus that you presented, but who is the Messiah who was a, a blessed, a pure man of Allah who was um, hung on the cross and then Allah saved him? He, look at him, read about him in the Holy Quran. He was pure and so was his mother. And the Holy Quran did not put any allegation against any of his forefathers. And this is the, the detail and uh, look how these people make excuses and then they um, they bind their hands with these people who are their enemies so the Ahmadis in the whole western world they should understand this that the uh, response is not uh, at, uh, at the at uh, Jesus himself, it is against the imaginary Jesus, which has not been presented by the by the Holy Quran, which, which the Quran has not regarded as being 
the the real Jesus. He, it was an imaginary character which people built up in his ha- in their heads, and the real Messiah that the the Quran has presented, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has um, um, praised him. And in the biggest praise is that he has called himself the second Messiah. These people are so mischievous that they still attack him even on this in this direction. As we're saying that they um, they cannot they are so rude that they they say different things at different times and wherever they can insult. They they can, they go and go and do it, and they say it said about it said this about Messiah that his his um, grand grandmothers were uh, of a uh, questionable character. Then they were saying that they they have no they have not any honor, and they don't know that the response that the Prophet Islam has made is not. At the real Messiah, is at the imaginary Messiah whom they have made the Son of God, and He has done it with reference to their own Bible. And the third, the way He has presented Jesus, He has presented Him, presented him as such a pure um, a man who had no um, questionable character in any of His um, His uh, grandparents, and and um, according to them, the, Jesus is the same. So ne- the next question arises is that if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not a, um, a secondary prophet of that Jesus, so the if the so that Jesus that you think he he will come according to you, if not today, tomorrow, won't he? So. So, um, when if he comes himself, about whom he, it says that he will come, that he this and he is that, then what will you do? So, when people deny because of their anger, it has no reality in it. It always, such cruel people always um, ax their own feet, throw the axe on their own feet. And the, one should understand their uh, point of view. One should know that their signs, their proofs have, have no substance. And the any result that is derived from what they're saying is um, goes against their opinion. The Prophet Islam here um, mentions the wisdom of uh, polygamy and say that there's always, he says there's always a possibility that a lady before the marriage, or either she should um, make a condition that the man will not marry, remarry, then she can do that. In another place, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says clearly that this is something um, in human nature and you cannot deny that a woman cannot bear it he cannot bear the thought of having his, her husband marry a second wife, but the Holy Quran has explained this in this way that the, the your, that if the natural needs uh, are kept and the inter- so the justice is also maintained and women are themselves they agree to this. Then that their husbands can uh, remarry. Then this is this is then it should be practiced, and this is the what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that by not doing this and what Allah the rights Allah has done, not by not using them and to to um, become a uh, become a, a, a second wife to someone. That this is wrong, and then to uh, to insult them, that's also wrong. Sometimes, a woman, uh, if a woman's husband wants to do another nikah, a second nikah, then that woman and her um, relatives become extremely annoyed, and they insult that person, and they uh, and such women and such. Um, they are such, um, their relatives are wrong because Allah has said, because of his wider w- wisdom, that men has, have been permitted to 
they can have up to four wives and then the person who um, does nikah according to the command of Allah then why should he be called uh, wrong and such um, ladies who who um, confront <laughs> sorry they are the sister, brothers and sisters of Satan because they re they reject and they deny the words of Allah and they want to fight him if any um, good Muslim has such a woman in their in their homes such a wife then then should to uh, punish her he should he should definitely marry again so this is also one of the reasons for having a second wife. If the wife if is uh, is saying insulting the, in, uh, insulting the Holy Quran, uh, sorry, Islam, and he and the, uh, and he she criticizes Islam, then and such a woman's husband should definitely marry a second time. Zuri is saying that I wonder how many there are who do this. Zuri is laughing. And everybody else is laughing as well. As far as um, slave girls, is, the question of slave girls is concerned, the last part of this verse is. Um, is, is also the subject of uh, allegations <laughs> by people who so are saying that I've answer, I have uh, spoken of this in my question and session that there are many matters which have to do with the customs of the time that if they were abandoned then it's not uh, um, uh, it's not up to one party to abandon them unless the other party also does the same and until that time it's not possible to um, to end that custom so the holy quran cannot suggest anything as a result of which and the, in the name of justice there should be injustice therefore the fact of the matter is that at that time the uh, prisoners of war the people who used to win them the individuals of that people they used to um, distribute them as um, uh, slaves because there were no war camps and the enemies of Islam who according to their own um, they used to treat the Muslim women in such a way they used to regard them as being legitimate for them without any nikah or anything so if, if Allah had um, regarded them as illegitimate for the Muslims then the slave girls should be in, uh, to be um, illegitimate for the Muslims then <coughs> it would have been a uh, transgression and then those uh, um, the uh, and the Muslim women would be mistreated, and in any case, these people's these women's um, these women's no character was questionable anyway. So this is something which could help in the future and in in in, uh, in international uh, treaties etc. It's a very it can be very useful of, uh, teaching, but then Allah has also um, taught as such um, teachings that the woman who lives in a Muslim person's house uh, <clears throat> her rights are far better than the Muslim woman who goes to um, who is imprisoned by another, by someone else so Allah has kept in view the revenge uh, but so that those people who have adopted a um, um, <clears throat> an, an evil method they should be um, they are um, punished, but also the justice has not been sacrificed. So, the, in order to maintain um, the, um, the justice that in, in Islamic society, then other methods have been used. So, the uh, teachings about slaves and slave girls in the Holy Quran, in the light of that, this uh, can cannot be uh, regarded as uh, something which is um, uh, which is to to satiate desires the time the the time 
of at, at the time of the holy the revelation of the holy quran the christian uh, countries and all the other uh, countries they used to treat their slave girls in a terrible way they used to uh, have the same uh, uh, relationships with them but the, in all other matters they would be uh, mistreated in, in a horrific manner so in islam has given a woman who is um, who is a um, um, prisoner of war if she has a, a a child then she will become a wife so we were saying that which other country uh, which other um, religion of the world has ever done this for women and from Islam said this is it's very pleasing that in our day and age in comfort confrontation to Islam and the the people who are um, uh, who are called who are not Muslims they have they have stopped um, polygamy and this is why it is not right for the Muslims as well that they should make their um, prisoners into and turn their prisoners into slave girls because Allah says that in the Holy Quran that you can only exceed against someone if they have first exceeded against you and this um, this um, this thing, this matter of the Holy Quran, um, he's, he's, he's sorted this issue out in this, um, in this, in this way that he has said that when the Holy Quran has presented this um, principle that the, the enemy, whatever the excesses the enemy commits, you can only uh, commit an excess which is up to that and no more than that. And now that the times of the world have changed and no people are um, take uh, any women or anyone um, for slaves and they don't permit the treatment that used to be meted out to people to slaves in the in the olden days so the Quran the Holy Quran is tying the hands of the Muslims and the idea before which was which was about the um, now it is wrong to have uh, slave girls and to have uh, any relationship with them Be uh, and this is this ended because this matter ended because um, the others reformed themselves who's is saying because there are two parties here in international relationships there are two parties if uh, uh, until both of them are um, uh, if, unless both parties um, are um, do the similar things they cannot be you cannot do anything unilaterally so uh, and such unilater unilateral um, decisions have such uh, um, so that the, the, you cannot uh, make unilateral decisions in uh, war uh, uh, situations and those countries who fight with each other or there's possibilities of them fighting with each other they sit in together in conventions and then they decide that we are going to fight but we will not do this a horrific act and not that horrific act we shall keep abstain from so this proves that until that time had not come when the the whole world um, was as at a uh, comparatively better state of um, civilization or human rights then at that that uh, the, those teachings of the Holy Quran were um, because of uh, the situation compelled it but in future if that time uh, comes again such situations come again then again they can reapply so it doesn't it does, you can't say that this ended this teaching ended with the time this was a um, conditional uh, teaching the one that is not conditional becomes temporary but one that is conditional it cannot be temporary if it if if the same situation happens again then again this will happen otherwise and if it doesn't then uh, this will not happen this will not be applicable in the same from the same point of view the promissile Islam has shed light on jihad and he has said that until the uh, the enemy uses um, a sword against Islam then you are not permitted to pick up a sword against them either if the enemy is doing a jihad of the tongue and then uh, and of the pen then yours must be the same in the same manner so this um, where, where it depends on the uh, enemy's 
uh, point of view, then what should be style that is adopted? And it cannot be said that now this is the the uh, um, enemy's um, style has changed, so this ends. That, so this no longer uh, applies in the promisile. It is wrong to say that the promisile Islam says that the could. Um, uh, jihad is abrogated now uh, in this in the sense uh, that uh, we we do not have to fight sword sword battles now but it hasn't finished permanently because those conditions that the holy quran has described if in the future at any time they are fulfilled then exactly the same um, sword uh, battles will have to be will have to be fought again so it is wrong to say that this this uh, teaching has gone has been left behind in history prophet says that now <coughs> the disbelievers do not uh, commit such excesses against the muslims that they do not make the Muslims women and Muslim men uh, into slaves. They are regarded as prisoners, as state prisoners. This is why. So it is it is haram for the for the Muslims to do anything like that because if they then do some anything like that, then it will be as if they are inviting the enemy to um, to do the same um, to meet out the same treatment against the Muslim uh, women. So Azur is saying that people who don't understand these fine details, there's some, some people think that whenever there's a war, then whatever women you uh, can lay your hands on, you should do whatever you like, you can do to them. Azur is saying that there was a gentleman in Wakfijadid, when I was in Wakfijadid, there was a person who wouldn't get married, and somebody told him that in the in the 71 war, there are many Hindu ladies who are from Rajasthan area, he said that a lot of Malvis have got there and they have, they are they are selling them, they are catching them and selling them and for them the problem wasn't whether was this this uh, legitimate or not, they thought that it is legitimate but he didn't have the money whether he can pay for them or not, therefore this idea is wrong today as well that it is easy to get a slave girl you, people used to have to pay for slave girls, they still do that. He came to me and he said that, uh, help me, help me out. This is, this is a, a, a pious deed, you help people, so you should also help me. And he said that there was, we were uh, used, to, we used to get humored by him. And um, he, he said that everything is fine except that he's, he's got a lack of money and I told him for God's sake have a fear of Allah this is not the same issue in these uh, situations that permission is not um, uh, not permitted who's really saying that he he lost heart but I was I was compelled to say that to him now he's really saying that I should uh, like to present before you some um, English writers who have extremely a beautiful character. I was saying that Wari is an American and other people who are, whom I have presented, Montgomery Water, etc.'s attacks. Uh, some English Ahmadis may find this difficult that we are always, uh, it's always us who are um, who are regarded as saying these things. So they're saying that they, they have a love to with their people and, and they sometimes raise their hands and for these people it can also be a, a source of trial so they're saying that it is not something that has just happened today it's always been happening Ikrama who was a Bujahil son and afterwards he became the Holy Prophet wasallam's son when people used to call him Abu Jahal's son he used to get very hurt and he used to give this reference and he came to the Holy Prophet وسلم, he said, O Prophet of Allah, it is my, my father's misfortune, I know, and I, but I'm the son, what what can I do? The people call me Abu Jahl's son and the, promise, the Holy Prophet وسلم, said that no one commanded that no one must call him the son of Abu Jahl. So look at how much justice there is in this, that those youth, members of the youth, when they hear these um, dharsis, then their minds must have they must be heard slightly that he we are the, we are the we are the people that they are talking about and um, they are sitting here but they are 
um, we have been criticized and they they think that we are Ahmadis and we are English as well. So, so um, what should we do? They're saying that I, I wish to tell them that from one, on, on one on the one hand I'm a Pakistani, on the other hand I'm also an Ahmadi. But when I when I um, comment on the situation in Pakistan, it does hurt me. But when it comes to Ahmadiyat, then if it's in the eyes of Allah, then sorry, if it's for the sake of Allah, then it is. Uh, is compulsory on me that I should um, should I don't say anything. I, I mean I I um, favor Ahmadiyat, and they are they were my people who have um, um, who have tried to kill my son, my uh, brothers. But but these are compulsions from the point of view of um, uh, of religion because those are the relationships of Allah to do with Allah and the other uh, things are um, other relationships are to do with worldly relationships but the, uh, Allah who is the creator his uh, relationship has to be um, number one and you have the example of Bakr Sadiq Razan who in front of you when his son had not yet become Muslim and once he said this with great pride I, he said he addressed his father and he said at such and such occasion I was hiding behind a stone and if I wanted to I could have killed you in one stroke but I didn't do that and he was trying to tell him uh, that how good he had been to his father and the Bukhazan who said if I was you I would have killed you I would have killed me because in front of God there is no um, relationships so, who is saying that this does not mean anything about, it's, it's got nothing to do with any national prejudices, but as we saying, I also thought to present those um, references as well in which the good, um, the uh, true people have presented uh, uh, their good opinions about the, promise, the Holy Prophet and people would know that there are people who are um, um, who uh, who answer the call, who respond to the call of their good nature, and they uh, speak the truth, and they they uh, applaud and praise and eulogize the Holy Prophet Sallallahu noble character. And so some of them are such that if they're alive, I feel like kissing their hands for what they have said. Apology for Muhammad by Godfrey Higgins. Who's saying this is, he's probably going to be alive, so you should find out. I was saying that I, you should get me to meet him so that I can express my emotions to him myself. He says polygamy, about polygamy he's writing. Because Muhammad following the example of the, the legislator of the oldest ceremonial religion, just as the rest of the Euphrates and well as well as all the Christians maintain of the world, Sorry, it didn't allow his people, the descendants, as they say in probably with the true, sorry, Ismail, the father, son of the father of the faithful, the plurality of wives. Sorry, I missed out bits because I couldn't hear them properly. He's all saying that these days in, uh, in English, people reduce sentences, but in the olden days, people used to use very long sentences. And also in these days as well, some scholarly people, they... I don't stop because they don't want to. Um, uh, to um, they 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 don't want to um, up, uh, terminate what they're trying to say, to truncate what they they're trying to say. Who's saying the style is found in the promise Islam as well, and often words uh, sentences become really long, but doesn't see, appear bad. But in in English, uh, sometimes these people's sentences are very long, so it is difficult to sort of saying to translate this into Urdu. But I know that people who read this, they might also not understand everything the first time they hear this. Those asking someone if he understood it. Those saying, tell me how much of it you have understood. The plurality of wives has been constantly abused by Christians to use their words for pandering to the base specialists of the, sorry I didn't catch the words, while the allowance of plurality of the wives could be visited 
with such know. very harsh censure? I do not know. <coughs> this is where one sentence ends, is what he's saying. So these are the people who sometimes, the English people as well, they, they accept that when there is a, a long sentence of the Prime Minister has been translated, they say they can't understand it. The, the fact is, that at the time, there was the custom of um, having long, um, long sentences, but in Urdu they don't appear to be uh, wrong because the word "or," which is "and," makes you gives you a pauses in the middle. But in English as well, they used to have very long sentences as, at, at some point. There are fictional books and other as well philosophical books, etc. You find some very long sentences, and you find this even today. And the other, apart from that, the person who is translating is his fault. Is, the Professor Islam's um, books, sometimes you can understand the things because of the, uh, sorry, as it, um, some, sorry. Now he's saying, let me tell you what else he says. He says, because Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi did, um, he followed such a, a uh, law, a law giving person who was um, sorry, he was just reading the reference of the oldest ceremonial, ceremonial religion of the oldest the ceremonial religion west of the Euphrates <laughs> and to the west of the Torah. <laughs> He was the founder of the most, the greatest religion, <coughs> and in the whole world as well. Moses had has this um, status that he is the um, founder of this incredible, this big, very major religion, and in following him, in his, and by not disagreeing with him, he he his own followers, but whom it says that. They are the father, the children of Israel, and he says that this is probably true. He is correct because the Arabs are the children of Ismail. So the Ismailis, that is the, but the at comparison to Banu Ishaq, Banu Ismail, but taught the the teaching which um, Ishaq's son gave to Banu Ishaq, the people of Ishaq, so he said, I don't understand what is what is uh, to, so strange about it and we cannot understand, this is such, this is um, a terrible um, insult and um, they try to make this using words which are very uh, undignified. So sort of saying that, listen to, caref listen to this carefully, it's, it says, the son of the father something of the priority of the wives there's a comma here he has been constantly abused by Christians he, he has often been the target of their uh, the Christians attacks and in his words he is. Uh, he brings them. Bendel is someone who take one, um, one um, nasty person and makes him meet another one. So he he um, and he, he keeps doing this. And people who have uh, sexual diseases and they they make them meet each other. They said they have, this is the kind of words that they have used. Now about the Holy Prophet and he says that. Um, the, a, a person who is combining, bringing together uh, the, their uh, two branches of their religion, and the same religion, they are is giving it to um, Banu Ishaq's son, brother Banu Ismail. Uh, they, they are making such allegations, disgusting allegations against against uh, him. And he says, but why the allowance for the priority of wives could be visited with such very very harsh censure? I do not know. Surely the example of Solomon and David, the men of the God's own heart. So I was going to say, look at the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was exactly this, this, this was what he said. And I'm very pleased to hear this in favor of what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. So surely the example of Solomon 
that and David or Daud Mikhail and David the man after God's own heart the oh, man of God's man own after God's own heart this is that he was who was in exactly in accordance with um, the Allah's with what Allah like that means he was Allah's beloved and and Allah had discovered him and Allah had had discovered him that he followed in Allah's law and then he says particularly might plead for a little mercy um, particularly since Jesus might sorry leave I think so he said for a little mercy it doesn't mean that the Holy Prophet should ask him them for mercy it's just his style of uh, his manner of speaking that you should be uh, fearful of Allah if someone um, how if has he has right of inheritance then this is if you fulfill all the, um, the if you keep away from all the uh, p <coughs> sorry um, uh, justice then can, does, that, should, does such a person deserve mercy so he, it doesn't mean that he is as begging for mercy it means that this person cannot be um, uh, cannot be said that he is um, a, uh, sorry, Jesus nowhere expressly forbids in any one of the 20 Gospels. The, the thing that I said yesterday is the thing that there is a, a, um, something in favor of that. Is saying, I told you that they made up the story that Jesus um, had said to marry only one wife. And within 20 Gospels, there is no single verse about who which you say for certainty that there Jesus has uh, has definitely limited the number to, to 12 and said that it's more than that wives in is okay. Apologies for Muhammad uh, Godfrey Hibbin, who Higgins was saying his, the book is called Apology, but the Holy Prophet does not need any apology. This is his style of uh, writing, so we have no right to attack his style. Then he writes. This is the first was page 75, and this is other ones. So, was asking if this was given by the research group or is it, it's come for Rabba apparently. So, I immediately sent it to me as soon as I send the message, they immediately sent it. But if the allowance of, 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 the, of, the, of wives to his followers, though guided with many very strict relations, may afford to. Yet there are some other that um, the we had there are some other may induce the inquirer uh, after truth with doubt or perhaps sorry the that may of pendulum to the child I was always reading some English, but the words are not very clear. Sorry, he's he's saying that first of all you should think that the permission that is given it it is tied to such strict conditions that about them to allege luxury, the word luxury uh, is completely wrong. They are not at all the they are not at all the servants of um, the truth. It's got nothing to do with each other. And when you look at this uh, permission. From that point of view, then you see there's nothing else like it. So it doesn't have anything to do with from from even from a far away distance. But you should look at the other teachings of that of that person. You should see his mother and style of life. Is he someone who is uh, who would live like a, uh, a nasty man? So be be gen be um, just and fair-minded, and. They're calling those teachings the Prophet Islam's teachings, but it means that uh, the, those that Allah has caused to descend. So they say the the, the, the teaching which you regard as Allah's um, relationship, sorry, Allah's um, teaching. Then you should you should wonder whether these two things can be combined together in one place. Can this be uh, someone who has this noble character? And who had called his people towards living a life of of this? And then how could he? How how could it be that he had said this? And a pers a cool inquirer should would see. The guy says, gentleman says, the charge present. 
In the pending charge, he, his other teachings are completely denying them. The, fa the fast of Ramadan, he's, we'll be going through now, he's showing, proving that as a proof. He said the fast of the Ramadan, which by the circulating effects of the lunar year, years, must often fall of the the hottest periods of the Asiatic summer. The other thing is this the teaching of a luxury, luxurious uh, people that you should fast for uh, six days. Even in those countries where it was so hot that sometimes the faces become so black, one cannot bear, bear that, uh, that hurt. When, when the pious Muslim men are forbidden to taste the most of the food or a single drop of water, they fought and thirst from morning to evening for 30 days together. It's not surely not very like clamping to. I'm not sure. Sorry, so it has nothing to do with pandering. What will the uh, watery of pleasure, the inland sun of luxury, say to the pilgrimage to Mecca? So those people who keep um, making, um, who keep, uh, uh, who keep uh, making these allegations, then what would they call the pilgrimage to Mecca? Muhammad surely will not be accused of pandering to pleasure and, and ordering it. If indeed he did order, then it's uh, any which I doubt. Then it is a terrible journey. That is the journey especially in the, hot, in the heat, it he says that if the Holy Prophet had given the command, the words are very interesting, if indeed he did order, which I doubt, that's what it says here, it means that this, he is giving a compliment to the Holy Prophet's brain that it cannot be a production of his brain, it must be Allah's word, and this command to give this command that from the whole world people should come to this uh, home and they should they should um, um, do so um, undergoing hardship this is not something which is the invention of his own mind because it must be something which has come from uh, on high so he's saying that uh, the Bosworth Smith is is another gentleman assistant master in the Harrow School late of something of Trinity College, Oxford. He has um, sent a great, he has given a great um, eulogy to the Holy Prophet ﷺ and he has made a huge, taken, uh, done a huge defense, performed a huge defense. So his, um, we should talk to him, we should talk about him with the, with the, uh, with the um, feeling of extreme um, gratitude. He says polygamy is an institution which springs from causes far too deep, far too deep down amongst the roots of society for any, however great, to abolish it by the word of his mouth or the stroke of his pen. He says that this, uh, the polygamy, this in the whole world, in the society, Islamic society, this is something which is uh, so deeply embedded and its roots are in history and also in, uh, are so deeply, uh, they're so deep in all societies that no man has the power and the capacity to completely um, end it, it's not something small. No matter how great the reformer he is, it's impossible for him to, merely by the word of his mouth and stroke of his pen, for him to abolishing it. In abolishing idolatry, Muhammad found among the Arab, uh, found among the Arabs, as I've shown, uh, among the Arabs, an extraordinary groundwork of belief, and even an existing religious. Uh, sorry, I didn't. And he was not backward to avail himself of this stance, I think Huzur said. Sorry, I, I didn't hear it properly. He said that as far as the, the jihad of the Holy Prophet against, the, against um, atheism was concerned, or idolatry was concerned, it was a great jihad. And despite the fact that the Arab, Arab society was, uh, was idolatrous and the background was that of idol, idolatry, and the teaching 
and such elements were in existence in the society and there were such internal um, movements which could have helped and aided this um, oneness of Allah. So although it's a great uh, jihad, but it had some helpers, which the Holy Prophet which uh, aided the Holy Prophet Sallallahu jihad of, towards the oneness of Allah. Existing, existing religious sentiment in his favor, he was not backward to avail himself of, uh, he never uh, stayed back. He, in this, in, in uh, making use of this um, background of the oneness of Allah and of the emotions that were in the bosoms, but we did not have a chance to uh, to emanate, to use them. The Holy Prophet ﷺ did not um, retract from uh, from making use of them, but his, in forbid if he had forbidden for polygamy, he would have found no, um, he would not have found any um, no outside help. All the society, the Arab, um, Arab society, and others were 100% uh, in favor of polygamy. So, Arabia have been even so much as a floating sentiment. Even monogamy. There was a, not even a floating sentiment, sentiment in favor of monogamy, and the women themselves were as contented with the part, as contented with this part of their, as sorry, as well as their masters. I'm not sure what is all said exactly, but in in Arab, in the Arab. In Arab, you do not find an, even a shadow in the atmosphere um, of this, that which was against polygamy, that there was not even uh, not a speck was seen, in nowhere in the whole of the Arab society, where there could have been a doubt that perhaps there are some uh, emotions against polygamy, so much so that ladies themselves. Um, with their masters, they were 100% uh, okay, and they were um, they accepted this fact, and they had accepted this principle with pleasure. That yes, poly polygamy should exist, and it is the right of a man to marry more than once. As a true Arab, Muhammad recognized polygamy. As a true Arab, Muhammad recognized as an existing institution. As a reforming legislator, he made many re re revelations sorry, to lessening this evil, but it's hardly more fair on these grounds to say that Muhammadism is responsible for polygamy. He says that the Holy Prophet وسلم, in these uh, circumstances, whatever was um, um, he tried whatever he could to reduce the effects of uh, polygamy, and in that time, it is extreme injustice to, to say, to allege that it was as if it was Islam which um, which encouraged polygamy. And it will be a tantamount to saying, if you say that, it will be saying that the, the, that the sentence has not come to an end. His his pen has not come to stop. He said then, it is to say that Christianity is responsible for slavery. That it will be a transgression, as if you, you could people say that um, Christianity is responsible for um, slavery. And if that's, um, if, that's, if that's okay, then you should say this as well. And if it's not, then you shouldn't say it. And, but then afterwards what he says, he says that it is okay to, to say this. It could be that Christianity uh, is responsible for, um, uh, for uh, slavery, but it is completely, uh, completely wrong to, the, to say, to claim that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu may have begun any, any uh, movement to, uh, to uh, encourage polygamy. Whatever he has done, he has done to reduce the, uh, reduce instances of polygamy, and nobody, you cannot um, uh, allege that he encouraged it. And then after he says the New Testament contains no direct condemnation of slavery. 
There is not a single direct condemnation of slavery that is found in the New Testament. On the contrary, it, is rec it recognizes it as an existing institution. And he says that it, the New Testament accepts it, and St. Paul is at least as pre precise upon the duties of servants, whom by the way he calls by the downright name of slaves, is, is not ended yet. He said that uh, St. Paul at least the New Testament contains it is true, no direct who is trying to read where, where it's from he's trying to find where he is reading and Saint Paul is at least as precise upon the duties of servants he says that Saint Paul has um, he has uh, expressed the responsibilities of a servant so clearly whom he calls, who simply calls slaves. Um, he uh, regards any servant as a slave and present and, uh, pre and says that that's responsibilities are limited to that. Um, a term hardly used in the Quran. That the Holy Quran does not call every and every servant a slave in the in the Holy Quran, but Saint Paul does it. So he's saying that my the um, my idea that he's he's trying to say that uh, um, Christianity could have could have been blamed for encouraging uh, slavery, but Islam cannot be blamed for uh, encouraging polygamy or to. Uh, or to or to have begun it, initiated it in any in any way. A term hardly used to the Quran. The must sorry, I, I didn't hear what you're saying. He says that just as Saint Paul um, has explained the duties of a master, and in the same, at least with the same. Um, he's explaining all the servants' responsibilities by calling them slaves, but no Christian will be granted on this score that his religion has either sanctioned slavery or in, is responsible for it. it. Despite this, there is no um, Christian who can accept uh, that St. Paul so has um, um, has in regard this to be okay. He's also saying as far as it being um, okay is concerned, uh, such things are found in St. Paul's um, statements which, uh, which um, revealed to us that he regarded slavery as being legitimate, otherwise he would have um, said something, he, they would have attempted to re remove it, abolish it, but it, he had, did not condemn it. Indeed, in the parables, it is found that the Allah's, uh, it calls some people Allah's uh, slaves, in the, in the parable of the vineyards, they, they also sound like um, slaves but apart from this there are many other uh, references which are found which in uh, which says which has not been condemned and not been regarded not been rejected as being ir an uh, irreligious practice and this uh, uh, result that he is deriving is completely correct but we have to believe these facts as they are he says and it is a fact that slavery has coexisted with Christianity. I think he said that, that he says that as far as we are concerned, we have to go on the uh, what the incidents are. We can't present imaginary uh, points and the, the uh, effects are telling us that slavery has coexisted with Christianity. Nay, has has professed to justify itself by Christianity, even till.
till this 19th century. He said that in the uh, in incidents, facts tell us that the, um, Christianity has walked hand in hand with Christian with slavery, and in favor of uh, slavery, it has in 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 terms of justifying it. You find even up to up to this day and age, you find it. You find them in existence, and despite that, he said you don't like it, and you don't you don't you wouldn't like it if somebody said that Christianity created slavery or uh, Christianity encouraged slavery. You wouldn't like to to hear that. So they're saying, I think the time is finished now. So they're saying it's very interesting these references, and the rest we shall bring we shall discuss tomorrow, inshallah. We are saying this is where, how far we've got. We are saying to keep this separate. رمضان مبارک اللہ رمضان کریم رمضان مبارک رمضان کریم رمضان مبارک رمضان کریم رمضان مبارک رمضان کریم Coming up next here on MTA is another edition of MTA Variety. Oh.